The Salarjung Museum, home to innumerable treasures, is one of the biggest attractions in Hyderabad. But behind it lies another story of the tragic loss of one of the finest palaces in India, the Divan Devdi. Hi, I am Akshay Chavan and I am going to tell you the story of the lost palace of the Salar Jungs. Chandeliers, marble statues, ivory chairs and paintings. There are over 45,000 objects in the Salar Jung Museum. Collected by Nawab Mir Yusuf Ali Khan, better known as Salar Jung III, this museum houses the largest single-man collection of decorative art in the world. While these objects look spectacular in the museum, just imagine how spectacular they must have looked in their original settings in a palace. Herein lies a tragedy. The great palace of the Salar Jungs was bulldozed and demolished in the late 1960s to make way for markets and buildings. Had it survived, it would have been one of the biggest tourist attractions in India. But so complete has been its obliteration that we can only trace its story through old photographs, maps and objects. Hyderabad was once known as the city of palaces, only a handful of which survive today. From the mid-18th century, the nobles built a number of palaces in and around Charminar, which were known as Devdis. The grandest among them was the Divan Devdi of the Salarjangs. The Salarjang family was of Arab origin, whose ancestor, Sheikh Oves, had migrated to the court of Bijapur in the mid-16th century. The family moved to Hyderabad in the mid-18th century. From 1804 to 1914, five members of the Salarjang family served as prime ministers to the Nizam and with power came great wealth. While most people talk about the three Salarjangs, Mir Alam, the first family member to become prime minister in 1804, was an interesting character. He was the commander of the Nizam's army which had participated in the Fourth Anglo-Mysore War in 1799. Even in those days, it was said in hushed voices that the Sriranga Pattam loot which he had gathered served as a basis of the Salarjang wealth. Not just this, Kheronisa Begum, whose love story with the then British resident James William Kilpatrick has been immortalized in Hyderabad and through William Dalrymple's book The White Moguls was Mir Alam's grandniece and a close relative of the Salarjan family. This gateway, now surrounded by hoardings and traffic, is all that survives of the palace that Mir Alam built. While today this gateway leads nowhere, it was very different a century ago. Thankfully, an old city survey map of Hyderabad made by British cartographer Leonard Munn in 1912 helps us piece together the vast expanse of the palace in its heyday. The Salarjan Palace comprised of two parts, the main palace, the Divan Devdi, and the palace gardens located on the banks of the Musi River. An arched bridge known as Chattakaman connected the two. The Divan Devdi was a complex of numerous palaces set in a garden. As you entered the main gateway of the palace, you came upon a large square around which were numerous reception rooms and offices of the Salarjang estate. On the right was the main reception hall known as the Aina Khana, whose walls were covered with Belgian glass mirrors and chandeliers. This was where the great receptions for the high-ranking guests were held, so it is no surprise that the two of the most iconic objects from the Salarjang collection the veiled Rebecca and the double statue of Mistopheles and Margareta were displayed here. Another building known as Chini Khana or the House of Porcelain was one of the most unique rooms in all of India. It was called so as its walls and columns were covered in extremely valuable antique china plates, saucers and cups. This room followed the style of the 17th century European palaces 
and one can only imagine how it actually looked like through its original prototype, the porcelain room at the Charlottenburg Palace in Berlin. Apart from these buildings, there were numerous beautiful pavilions and courtyards filled with innumerable treasures. The Tipu Sultan's palace in Bengaluru and the Darya Daulat Bagh in Sri Rangapattam are considered the finest examples of wooden architecture in India. But till the 1960s, a grand wooden palace almost thrice the size of that of Tipu Sultan stood in the Salar Jung Gardens. This was the famed Lakkad Court located right behind where the Salar Jung Museum stands today. Five generations of the Salar Jung family lived in the Divan Deudi. Its last occupant was Mir Yusuf Ali Khan, Salar Jung III, who spent his lifetime collecting art and artifacts from around the world which were housed in the vast rooms of the Divan Devdi Palace. Immediately after Mir Yusuf Ali Khan's untimely death due to a sudden heart attack on 2nd March 1949, the Divan Devdi and its treasures were sealed by the Indian Army which was then stationed in Hyderabad as a part of the police action against the Nizam. Nawab Salar Jung III had died without heirs and more than 100 claimants came forward for a share in his estate. The government of India formed a committee to look into the legitimacy of these claimants known as the Salar Jung Estate Committee. As a part of the compromise, the heirs decided to donate the art collection to establish a museum in honour of Salar Jung III. On 16th December 1951, Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru inaugurated the Salar Jung Museum in the old Divan Devdi Palace. In 1968, when the present museum building was built, the entire collection was shifted from the old Divan Devdi into the new building. Sadly, the government decided not to acquire the palace nor the famed Salar Jung jewels, which were then distributed among numerous heirs. Within a decade, the palace and the gardens were demolished bit by bit and turned into buildings and markets. With this, the great palace of the Salar Jungs disappeared into history.